Morning, everyone. It's uh, Adam Hart here at Zest4, Head of Cloud and Connectivity. Uh, I'm going to run through three main parts of Uconnex from Zest4. Uh, first part will be lease lines. Second part will be DSL, so fiber to the cabinet, uh, essentially, and fiber to the premises. Uh, and then the third part will be uh, faults, so speed checks, fault check-in, that sort of stuff. All of this is done within the Uconnex portal. Uh, if you don't have a login for this already, uh, ping me an email. I'll get that sorted for you straight after this. So, let's think about the highlights first of all. So, almost like the why, you know, why would you use this over a another? Uh, and there's a few for me. There's a few really strong reasons. First off, everything in one place. Okay. So whether you need fiber to the cabinet, whether you need a lease line, doesn't matter. You just go to the same place and put a postcode in and, and it'll give you the results. Uh, obviously, you can do fault checking. So when you've got live lines uh, with Zest, again, it's one place to, to actually check on those, do speed tests, look at the uptimes, look at download speeds, look at you know how often the router reset, all that kind of stuff is, is here. For lease lines, we've got 10 suppliers. So you are physically checking against 10 suppliers in under a minute, which is pretty amazing considering I know lots of partners that, you know, will go to three or four people and, and then wait for those results to come back. It's, it's quite labor intensive. You'll find commercially we're, we're there or thereabouts. I'm not going to promise you that we're absolutely the, uh, the cheapest every time. That is, that is not the case, um, but we'll always be in the ballpark. And what I would urge you to do is come back to us on anything so you know if you see that we're a pound out let us know please always let us know we're constantly chipping away at the suppliers to, to get the very best possible rates and incentives as well which we'll we'll do more on you do get a choice of contract lengths as well so we'll go through that later and one of the, the big things for me is the interconnect with eight by eight so what that means is if particularly if you're buying a lease line it comes as standard and that means if you've got 8x8 customers, they're on a, an 8x8 phone system, you will get uh, the best possible outcome. So quality of service, uh, because all of the traffic will route directly into the 8x8 data center via our uh, ISP rather than going out through the public internet. And that's the key bit. So it, it, it's kind of that last 5 to 10% of, of issues where they might be getting a bit of jitter because of, you know, breaking out over the, over the public internet. That goes away. Yeah. So, so that it comes as standard and you can upgrade to get that on the lower level connectivity. And I'll, I'll touch on that as well. So those for me are the, uh, are the highlights. OK, let's get into how you actually use the portal. So I'm just going to log in here. So we'll start with um, a lease line quote. So this will be used So I'm just in a test account at the moment, go straight into quoting and then click on the Ethernet quote, lease line quote. Uh, you can do it from the right hand shortcut as well. And so once you've clicked on there, very simple, put your postcode in. We don't need a phone number for this, i.e. you know, an existing copper line phone number, just postcode. Select the address from the drop down. One thing to note on here, you'll see these AO numbers uh, and that just means there's already services going into that building. So they're like the, your silver and gold keys uh, effectively. Sort of point of, of interest really with those that later on they become quite important. Okay, so carry on with that. Select the lease line uh, and select the length of contract as well. So whether you want uh, three years or one year, typically three years is always better because you um, you actually get uh, installation included in that. One year is really not a fantastic idea. Uh, you select your bearer and bandwidth. I wouldn't really go any, obviously, less than 100 over 100. Typically, I'd try and select a larger bearer. So I always try and select 1,000 and then either 100, 200, uh, etc. on the on the bandwidth. Uh, and that just future-proofs things rather than limiting the customer. You know, they can't then upgrade uh, later on, or it's not easy to. Uh, you can choose all of the providers or limit them if you want to. I don't know why you would, but you can untick some. And then that'll just run through all of those providers. And this is actually taking longer than it would do in reality because I'm, I'm talking and, and showing bits, but this is 
under 60 seconds to get all the results back. So what you will see is the price per annum. Clearly, you want to divide that by 12 to get your monthly. I'm trying to get a column put in. It'll probably come out in version two of the portal. So around September, October, where we'll have a, a column for the monthly on, on um, lease lines. So you can see on there, there was a, a load of different prices. And what you'll see as well is, is they're quite varied yeah so you've got you've got some that are massively different to others now it, normally you're going to go for the cheapest but if you've if the customer's got an aversion to a particular supplier you might go for the next cheapest one yeah so that's the discussion you'll have with them we also spit back what's not available just for completeness so you know it's done the full check so select the one you want so we'll go for the bt uh, one in this case because it's the cheapest Put your customer details in abc limited and then select whether we're going wires only or managed yeah so depending on the uh, on the speeds required you'll select a different router yeah so uh, if we're going over 100 meg you're going to go with the micro tick um, which is 200 pounds per year so that's a a managed router uh, from us so click on that one pop that in and then decide if you want uh, installation on site as well. It's not mandatory. Create the quote and you can then access this. It's a bit of a pain uh, depending on how big your screen is. You've got to scroll across It's a minor inconvenience. I'm going to get that changed so you won't have to do that. But uh, just for now, just remember you've got to scroll across to actually see the quote and then you just save that so that you don't need to come back into the portal. You've got that for 30 days. Uh, so that is your price. And you can uh, obviously add your margin on uh, and take that to the, not that document, but take it to the customer and, and prop it on, on your terms. So that's, I think that's pretty straightforward. And then you can obviously rerun these, you know, if it, if it, if it expires, just run it again. And what you'll see as, as you progress there, you'll see previous orders in the portal. So, so that, that showed how quick and easy it is to, to get a lease line quote. Um, come and talk to us if you, if you get any issues around that, if some things don't make sense. But yeah, frankly, I don't think it could be any easier. Now, if we're looking at fiber to the premises and fiber to the cabinet, sort of DSL type stuff, there's, there's, it's a bit more nuanced. So again, you go to the same place, either quoting or on the right hand side shortcut, hit the button and go into DSL. So what we're doing here is we're not really going to do quotes. We're going to just check on availability and, and do some uh, effectively some speed checks as well. And so I'll put the postcode in. Now, ideally, it's great if you've got an, a phone number as well of that, that sort of um, um, existing broadband. It might not be their phone number, but there'll be a number associated with it. It's helpful if you've got it. You get more accurate results. It's not it's not essential, but just, just as a sort of top tip, I, I would put it in. So from the drop down, select the address that you want, whether that's business or, or otherwise. Let's pop that in, check availability, and that'll come back with what's available. And that will start with very basic uh, sort of ATSL. Um, you know, right through to fiber to the premises. Now, on here, you can see how we've got fiber to the cabinet, we've got 40, 40, 10 and 80, 20, so different speeds. Also, you can get fiber to the premises, but it's potential survey. So what that means is the uh, exchange is geared up for it, but there probably isn't the infrastructure there to support it, i.e. they can't actually run it from the cabinet so a survey would be about three hundred pounds to um, to check and then give any build costs on the back of it. So, yeah, just uh, it's it's not one that most people are going to go for. But but if there's nothing else available, it might be worth getting the survey done for a customer. So yeah, just be aware of that. The ones in red, I'd probably avoid unless you know unless the customer's absolutely adamant that they want to they want to get that. If if they're sort of willing to go for fibre to the premises, I'd be strongly looking at a lease line at that point. I know it's an uplifting cost, but you're future proof in the business, especially if you've got more than sort of eight, 10 people working at a site requiring broadband. 
I, I don't think they should be uh, certainly shouldn't be relying on on fiber to the cabinet anymore. It, it, they need a, a business grade service. Okay, so that's that's what that is on there. We're also uh, running this through BT and Talk Talk, so yeah, we've got sort of best of both worlds there. So this is where the UConnex product starts kicking in, as I said, for the slightly lower end. So you've got fiber to the cabinet there on a Uconnex product. So that's a managed service. So that will be router included um, in that price. And, and, and we configure the router for you. You just got to plug it in uh, and then it's monitored. So from a, a sort of a customer point of view, partner point of view, you know, that works really well. And that will also give you your interconnect into eight by eight. So it's kind of an assured connection. So we'll go ahead and place an order here. So select the one you want. Just pop in the details. Generally, it's going to be business, but you might you might do the odd personal one. Pop in the details. Okay, ABC again. Are we migrating? Yes or no? And what care level do we want, etc. There is a uh, an enhanced care option, bit of a cost to it. Pop in the dates, on-site contact details, all the usual sort of stuff. If you've ever ordered before, you'll you'll know what's required. More detail, the better, frankly. It could be you as the on-site contact, but it equally, it might be the, uh, the customer name. And then any any notes, you know, whether perhaps if there's access is issues, you know, like ring the bell or <laughs> usual usual stuff. Nobody's there before nine thirty, you know. And we've had that where engineers are turning up at eight in the morning and then you know, they can't do the job. So that'd be helpful to know that sort of stuff there. And then just pick a um, pick an installation date. That will obviously be confirmed in due course. And that uh, is summarized and then just go ahead and place the order. So pretty simple. So the next stage is when you've got orders live or you want to do speed checks, you, you need to be able to come to the same place to do that. So what you'll notice, a couple of things on here, you can see the map. So that will show your live connections and where they are in the country so you've got that sort of live map of of connections typically the way that i would do this is go into go into your internet services and and then just look at what's active and what's sort of pending in here yeah so if you click on the actions button you can get live traffic monitoring of your connections so that classic sort of you know the customer says i'm having a nightmare just can't get any speed whatever or it's not working first thing to do pop in here yeah, have we actually got any action? Yeah, so it will it will give you that feedback that, yeah, there is actually activity on the network. We can see how long that particular session's been up for. In this case, it's what, two, two days. You know, so if there were any issues, that'd be your first port of call every time coming to here. You can also see uh, what they've uploaded and downloaded in terms of, of data over the last few days. You can see from this account, it's, you know, it's not very heavy usage. Yeah, so again, quite a useful tool. And then that gives us all our logs there for effectively issues. Yeah, I can see you know, the longest it was up for was 34 days. But obviously, if they've restarted the router and that sort of thing, then it will it will pick up here. So from a support point of view, so if you've gone through through the basics there, maybe there is an issue with the line, raise it here. Yeah, stick in the number, um, run a test on that. So normally you'd run a TAM test on it. And you can see the results below that I've already uh, that I've already got. So I can click on one of those. And critically, I can create a support case from here. So that's giving the engineer all the information already rather than asking the same questions about have you done this? Have you reset this? Yeah, we don't we don't need to do that. We can see if there's any issues from this test. So yeah, just go ahead, click on create a ticket. That populates the ticket information. And then you might want to put, yeah, there's an issue with, with speed or with uh, continuity, whatever it is, just give it some sort of sensible subject header. 
and select a category and, uh, and pop it through. And again, contact details wise, probably going to be you. But if it if it isn't, just put some detail around that. So who you know who who needs to be contacted on it. And you can uh, add attachments as well if uh, if there's any sort of supporting documentation that you want to put in there. Okay, that is lease lines covered. DSL covered and faults covered. I'm just going to open up the, there we go. You'll have to take yourself off mute if you want to ask any questions, but um, Marcus, have we got any, any questions on text? Um, uh, yeah, just the one that came through a few minutes ago. Can you break down the enhanced care on FTTC or FTTP, please? Yeah, so I'll send out some documentation on that. So um, to, it, it's to do with standard response times. So you, you're you're kind of at the mercy of um, industry standard times for fibre to the uh, to the cabinet. Obviously, the enhanced care will give you the it should give you the eight hour response on that. I don't know if it actually gives a guaranteed fix. So let me let me send out the documentation. I'll uh, I'll whiz it out to everyone that attended. Anyone else? Any questions? Another few questions came through, Adam. I've noticed that the addresses aren't always up to date. If we place an order, what would happen if the address is wrong? Ah, okay, good question. So, so that's going to get picked up during the process. If you've placed an order and it needs to be changed, we can do that in flight. Once an engineer has gone to site, it becomes a bit more difficult. Yeah, so if it, if it, if it's found out at that stage, that's a bit more challenging. But we can we can change things right up to the point of uh, of delivery. I'm presuming that's on the sort of fiber to the cabinet stuff rather than lease lines. Both, yeah, okay. One of the little tricks around fiber to the cabinet and to the premises is to use AO the AO numbers. And if you can find the address and it's got an AO against it, then it's already got services into that building. Sometimes you'll see an address where there's where there's no key. Um and I wouldn't use those. Yeah. So but always if if, if there's any kind of issue, just raise it. Just ask your account manager. We'll always look into that. Question from Nick, do we use our normal logins? Yeah, presumably you've got a Zest portal login, so we, we can match it to that one for the UConnect portal, or I can give you a, a brand spanking new login for that. Just let me know, Nick, which way you want to do it. New one. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you, uh, give you that. Once you're set up, Nick, you can then open it up to anybody else in your organization. So if they're on the same domain uh, as you, i.e. the same email address, then you can uh, you can give access to other people. Just for the benefit of everyone on, just play, use it, you know, compare it. As I said, sometimes will be massively uh, cheaper than, than anything else I've seen, particularly for certain providers. If it's sort of normal BT, it will be there or thereabouts. But it's always good to get feedback. If you think we're, you know, if you think we're out commercially, please let us know because we don't always know. You know, we, we sort of take it directly from the suppliers. So just raise anything on, on that score. And uh, uh, and we'll look at it. We don't we don't want to lose the business just just for the sake of uh, of a pound a month. That'd be uh, really annoying. Great guys. If there's no more questions, I'll give you the rest of the day back. Have a have a uh, oh sav <laughs> straight in there. Um, if FTTB is available, subject to a site survey, will it... no sav it. So so if if it's showing in red. Um, as subject to site survey, then that means the infrastructure is not not there. So it's, there's probably going to be build costs. So there, there's, there's going to be a cost to that as a, as a minimum. It's three hundred pounds to do the survey. Not from not from us. That that comes from Open Reach. So will it? When will it be available without the survey? That depends on if if somebody else. Let, let's say the neighbour in in the in the the premises next door installs fibre to the premises, then it'll be available and it will show up so occasionally it's worth raising that because it doesn't always update on the portal instantly 
So you can get that where uh, you know, someone will say, oh, my neighbor's just had that put in. In which case, you know, we can we can take that to the network and say, right, we know we know fibre to the premises is next door. That should be an easy win. But yeah, just 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 flag it. Great stuff. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, let me know. Just ping me an email if you've got any sort of burning questions or or any issues with logging in or whatever. Really good to uh, to get the feedback. Appreciate it. Thank you.